Hi, my name is Gerhard Schwander and welcome to Selling Power TV. Today we have the pleasure of meeting with Vijay Sundaram. He is Chief Strategy Officer for Soho. Welcome, Vijay. Thank you. Thanks for having me. How do you see the future of selling um, when you consider all those changes in technology? Like, mm. uh, you know, over the last few years we have big data and analytics, uh, mobile, social, cloud computing, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, virtual reality, um, associative computing. I mean, the, there's, there's so many things coming down the pike and people are scared. Mm -hmm. How is that going to change me or in, in, in my ability to make money? Mm -hmm. she, this is a really uh, interesting question. It's very futuristic in a sense of how this whole system, one of the oldest things that humans have done is selling to others, right? right. <laughs> Even from exactly. the early system yeah. of barter, right? I have to sell you my stuff so I can get your stuff. And uh, <clears throat> what, 16 million salespeople in the United States. Exactly, yeah. right. So, so I think, uh, you know, there, there are several things that, that might emerge and might change. So one example is, we always think of selling as a process by which <clears throat> I sell you. So in other words, my product gets sold. That paradigm might change. It might be that my product gets bought. So you buy. Right. So I'm simply an instrument in that transaction. Right. I'm not necessarily the perpetrator of the transaction or, right. or the prime mover of it. Right. I'm just the instrument in it. And so I think increasingly products will be bought rather than sold. And, and some of the trends that make that happen is things like in discovery. You, know, you can find out anything right. online. You can compare prices online. Right. Prices are dynamic. You know, people respond instantly. How many times have you looked for an airline ticket and found that every one of them is at the same price to the last cent, right? right. So what's happening there, right? So people know that it's a buyer's market and they're going to be bought and not sold. Right. So they just have to have the systems ready so when people right. are ready to buy, all the, all the things they need right. are right there. So, so that's the first big change I see is that, that products will tend to be bought simply because the user is going to be, get more knowledgeable and it requires less. Earlier, the salesperson played this role of bridging information gaps. Right. And now they have less of that role because in many cases, the, the, the consumer or the buyer might actually know more than the right. salesperson. Right. Right? So they don't play that role anymore, so they've right. got to play a different role, right. which is facilitating the process well, let, rather than advancing it. You know, compare the way General Motors sells cars and the yes. dealership and the way Tesla sells. Yes, exactly. Without dealerships. It's a perfect example. It's a perfect right. example. The second thing is the interaction, I look at the interaction between uh, technology and, and humans. You know, oftentimes you hear this question uh, of, uh, is the human nature of sales going to become uh, irrelevant, you know? And I don't quite see it that way. I think of technology as, as doing things that, as, as assisting the humans. I'll give you two or three examples. The most simplest example of, of technology in a sales process is just is automation. I don't, and what, what are we under, what's the underlying thing? Humans, you and me, we don't like to do mundane stuff. Right. We don't like to do the same stuff well, again and again. Right. right? So right. I get a lead, I have to, some lead comes in from some source, I have to register it somewhere, and I have to uh, contact the lead back, tell somebody in my organization, or pass it to the right person, et cetera. Right? There's some process that has to be done. That process is boring. Right. It's variable because the right. next guy who comes right. is going to forget the third step. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of time. Right. So that's an example of what technology can do, right? It augments what the human can yes. do and what the human right. would rather not right. do. Another example, so that's the first example is merely automation. Second example is streamlining a process. So you take a little bit more of a complicated process. So we have a process in the company for how content is managed. Yes. You know, people write right. content, so that they, it involves writers, it involves marketers, it involves reviewers, editors. So when these people work together, there's a process of how this pipeline works, where content comes in. So AI and technology can establish that process. Right. And so you and me, if you're a writer and I'm a marketer, we're only focusing on the content and not the process that executes that, right? So that's another thing AI can do. It's work that is hugely error prone and we would rather not do. I'd rather write the content yes. or review yeah. it than yeah. work the process of right. content, right. right? And of course, the, and the third example I provide is something that humans are poor at doing, which is working through large quantities of data. You talked about big yes. data. You've got to facilitate decisions. Absolutely. Right. Think of prediction Yes. in a sales right. process. Right. 
we all know customers churn. Right. Can you, can your system tell me, take right. my customers right. and put a, a, a red bucket and an right. orange bucket of right. people who are likely to churn? You know, why could, you should right. be able to do that. And what seen, are the early warning signals? Exactly. Yeah. What are the early yeah. warning signals? And the system has access to all of this. It has looked at every de, every transaction, right. every customer, in a way that humans can't. It has done all the statistical analysis. And so it can tell you that these guys are likely to churn. Right. Now, would a sales guy ever complain that technology is going right. to take his job right. if it actually exactly. tells them right. these are the customers that so are going to churn? So here's the key question. <clears throat> as technology gets better, yeah. and as technology assists more, what do we need to do for salespeople to get better? I think it's adapting that technology. Okay. It's thinking out what I can do with right. the technology. Right. We, earlier we talked, right. in an earlier segment, we talked right. about blueprints. Right. So that is a way to right. create a specialized process. Right. The system can't design that process, right. but it can execute a process for me. So if I design a process right. how to automatically right. manage leads, right. then right. the AI actually helps and, me. And I think there's an analogy in photography. <clears throat> You know, the, we all have iPhones and they have great cameras, but it hasn't eliminated Canon or Nikon. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Because there's always the, the ability to create something better. Yes. And I, and I think what we need to count on is human creativity and as leaders, we need to stimulate that. Yes, absolutely. And I think, as uh, at least I've seen in my experience, the smarter people don't actually fear the technology. Right. Because they know right. that it can, right. can't be as smart as they can be. The best, so they figure out how to use it. Yeah, the best technology is the one that is invisible. Yeah, exactly. Right. So they figure out how to use it right. and how to not right. do the stuff, right. the boring stuff, the error-prone stuff, the repetitive stuff. Final question. How does the name Soho, uh, how did it come about? Who came up with that name? You know, it can, uh, it, the name's about... 15 years old or so. And I think it came up when, uh, when there was a vision for this company. I talked about the vision of software being completely ubiquitous and available right. to everybody. So we thought of anyone, however big or small, working in an, uh, in an office or in their home should be able to do it. So we thought of small business, small office, right. small business, right. and that sort of morphed into Zoho. Got it. Fascinating story. I think Oso is one of the most innovative and fascinating companies. Go to Zoho.com and educate yourself. And thank you so much for sharing all thank your you. wisdom with us. My pleasure. Thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Enjoyed it.